I got a call from one of our agents in Colombia who told me that a shipload of cocaine and marijuana had left Colombia for the port in Mexico. So I called my friend, a commandante of the MFJP. He provided me with 12 Mexican federal agents and myself and four of my agents. We proceeded to that, to that little town. We arrested Jacobo and he told us that the drugs were at this little ranch about 30 miles outside of the city. I said, and the drugs are there? And he says, yes. And who is there protecting the drugs? He says, just some of my ranch hands. Don't worry about it. They're not armed. And I said, if this is a trap, I said, you're going to be the first guy shot because I'm going to use you as a shield. So we proceeded. We were in five cars and there was like four or five of us to each car. I was in the lead car with the defendant that we had handcuffed in the back seat. He was leading us to the ranch. When we got there, we noticed that off the main freeway, there was only a dirt road. I sent uh, agents to scout around to see if there was other entries we could make to surround the ranch and come in from different areas. And there was nothing but cornfields around that, that ranch. There was only one way in. I told the uh, group supervisor of the federal police, Mexican federal police, I said, what do you think? We were looking down binoculars. And all of a sudden, as I was looking down by binoculars, the vision came to me. Because my mom is a fortune teller and she told me, son, you're going to be in a situation where there's going to be a lot of shooting and, and there's going to be blood. I see blood on the cornfields. So I got this, sh this chill over me. And I told everybody, everybody put your bulletproof vest on. I said, I, I think we're going to get involved in a major shootout here. And I asked the group supervisor of the federal police, says, what do you think? And he says, I don't know, Hector. I said, what do you think? And I remember joking with him and saying, you know what? I think we ought to call the police on these guys. And he sadly looked at me and he says, Hector, he says, unfortunately, we are the police. I said, well, we got no choice. We got we to gotta take, take it. So I told everybody to mount up, get their weapons ready. And uh, we, we were in the lead car. We started driving down the road, and as we got closer, all of a sudden, I didn't hear anything. I just saw glass explode in front of me. I knew from instinct that, it, that somebody had blown out a windshield. I dove out of the car. To this day, I don't even know how I got behind a cement water trough. I crawled to it, and I could hear intense gunfire coming at us not only from the front, but also from the cornfields from the back. We were in the middle of an ambush. And I could see some of, the, some of our guys had been shot and were, we went, they were wounded. I could see right away. I said, oh my God, what, what if we get ourselves into? And his other agent, Sal Leva, DA agent, he crossed next to me. And the, the shooting is so intense that I could feel the bullets hit the, the cement troll, water troll, and I could feel like bits of cement behind my neck. Sal Leva, he told me, he says, he says, boss, he says, because I was in charge, he says, we're gonna die here. And I said, Sal, I'm not gonna die here. I said, maybe you and that mouse you got in your pocket, but I ain't dying here. And he says, there's too many of them. He says, they're gonna kill us. And I remember telling Sally, if we don't start shooting back, they are going to kill us. we got to fight back. So I remember I was afraid to even put my hand up. It was so intense. Finally, I started yelling at everybody, shoot back, fight back, shoot back. And then my guys, and we started shooting back. And I remember receiving heavy fire from a silo. I mean, every time I try to come out to shoot, I mean, I received fire from on top of the silo. But anyway, we continue fighting and repelling the aggression. Then finally, when it, when it, when it got, when we were controlling the, the, the shootout a little bit, I could hear some of the MX feds, you know, they, they were yelling, please help us, you know, we're bleeding to death, get us some help. So I told Jim White, I says, let's back up this Ram Charger. 
tour, towards where they're laying, one of, our, one of our DEA cars, and let's see if we can get these guys out of there. So Jim says, how are we gonna do that? He says, I said, well, what we can do is, I said, I'll lie on the floorboard and try to back it up and you shoot over me, over the engine, but get behind the engine because the bullets were coming through and through. I mean, we could see they were going right through the, the ram charger. So we did that. We were able to back up the ram charger close to where the bodies were laying, the wounded were laying, and I crawled underneath and I started pulling in from their legs and their arms to this side of the ram charger where the, there was cover. I was able to pull five into safety and we loaded them into the charger. And I told Jim White, let's go. I said, you get behind the wheel, I'm gonna shoot over him and try to get these guys out of here because they're gonna bleed to death. So we take off and as we're pulling out, the whole back windshield is blown out and the, the wounded are shot some more. And they were that close mowing us down with machine gun fire. We pull out and we get on the main highway and we realize that we don't know where we're going because we're not familiar with the area. We're just driving as fast as we can drive on the paved highway. And Jim is saying, where are we going? I said, I don't know, just keep on driving. I said, I, I, I don't know where, where we're gonna find the closest hospital. I even lost track of where north, east, south, and west was, I just just drive. And as we're driving, I see a yellow cab coming down the highway and I tell Jim, there's a cab coming, pull over, pull over. So he pulls over and I jump out of the Ram Charger and I get in front of the cab with my AK-47 and I yelled at the taxi driver to stop. Thank God he didn't have a passenger who was by himself. So I got him out and I noticed he had urinated all over his pants. I must have been a horrible sight because here I am pointing an AK-7 at him and I'm drenched with blood from carrying the wounded.